Hey programmers, welcome back. Right now, let's keep going over this loop exercise set. And what I wanna do is go over section one. So here we'll want to solve all of these different functions. So I'll start with the first one. And like it says in the instructions, what you'll want to do is save uh, each function to its own JavaScript file. So I'll go ahead and do that as well. All right, so let's begin with the one to four function. So what this function should do is print all whole numbers from one to four inclusive. And the function takes in no arguments and doesn't need to return any value. It should just print to the terminal, right? So they're pretty explicit in the instructions here. Uh, you don't need to write a return line, just console.log within your function, right? So by simply calling one to four, you should print out the numbers one through four. So this is a nice little warm up. Let's go ahead and create this one. So I'll need to define my function, of course using what we know about functions. So I'll say let one to four equals a function. And they also tell us no arguments. So this should be uh, the baseline to our solution. Then from here, I just want to print out some numbers from one to four. And so what I could do here is write console.log four times over and just literally print out the number. But why don't we actually leverage for loops? That way I can keep my code pretty clean. You can imagine if I want to print out more numbers like one to 100, you shouldn't write 100 different console.logs, right? So I'll write a nice for loop here. And what I should do is start by creating my counter, right? So I'll say let's i equals one, right? Here, they're pretty specific. Don't start at zero, you wanna start at one. So i equals one and go up to four. So I can say either i is less than five or I can say i is less than or equal to four, whichever makes more sense for you. And then on every iteration, I wanna hit every number counting by one. So I'll just do i plus plus. And simply put, I just want to console.log my current value of i. So I'll give this a shot. So I'll run this, node one to four. And there I have my correct output. And of course, if I wanted to, you know, you can call this function many times and it's gonna print out one to four uh, for every call you make to this function, right? One through four, and then one through four again. All right, so that was a nice warm up. Let's now work on this count up problem. So I'll create a file for this one and I'll paste the prompt in. And so in this count up problem, what I want to do is write a function that takes in a max number as an argument. And the function should print out numbers from one up to and including the max. The function doesn't need to return a value. It just needs to print similar to before. So this is really just a little a step up from our last problem. I still want to start at one, but this time my ending point is going to be dynamic based on the argument. So let's go ahead and start this one. Like always, I'll just create my function definition. And this time I should take in a max number as an argument. And of course, I'll need to establish this logic using a for loop because I'm not sure where I need to end, right? It's gonna be contingent on this max argument. So I'll have a for loop that begins at i equals one, right? That's given in the problem. And it should go up to and including the max. So I'll say i less than or equal to the max. And I'll hit every number counting by ones. I can get that information from just looking at the examples, right? And count up is called with an argument of five, I go from one through five, or if it's with three, I go one through three. And like before, on every iteration, just simply console.log i. So nothing too fancy here. Another warm up in my opinion, and let's just run this code. So I'll call count up. There I see one through five. And then on my second call, one through three. And so next problem here, mint max, it's gonna be very similar, kind of just utilizing or combining our last few problems together. So I'll create that file over here. And more or less the same business, taking two numbers, min and max, and you just wanna print out numbers from min all the way up to and including the max. So let's actually just bang this one out really, really quick. Obviously, since now you want to be dynamic with your starting point as well, when you initialize your counter, you can say let i equals the min. And from there, you can still say i is less than or equal to the max. And now you have your start and your end in a dynamic way. And a simple console.log over here should do the trick. So let's give this one a run. I'm gonna have tons of practice writing loops. You're gonna use them a lot. So here I have five through nine in my first example. There it is. And then on the second example, they go from 11 to 13, which makes sense over here. And the third example is pretty interesting. Here they're saying our min is 20 and our max is 11, which in this scenario, our min is bigger than our max. So you actually print out no numbers uh, over here, which is actually what happens in our code, right? I don't print out any numbers for this third call. If I just wanted to like run that third call, right? Nothing gets printed out. So in the case of this third call, min is going to be 20, max is going to be 11, and I set i equal to 20. And I said max was equal to 11. So what I do on the first iteration is I check, is 20 less than or equal to 11? That's false, and so 
you don't run the for loop at all. So you don't console.log, you just return out your function and you didn't really do anything. So what you wanna do is always bear in mind, even when you're about to start like the first iteration of a for loop, you still have to check your condition, right? And it must be true if you're gonna run your for loop at least one iteration. So now let's work on this string iterate problem. So this will just be some good practice for that classic iterative pattern. And so in this one, what I wanna do is just take in a string as an argument and print out every character one by one. So I'm definitely gonna need a function for this. So I'll say let string iterate equals a function, it takes in some string. And what I ought to do is use a for loop to iterate through that string. So I'm gonna establish a for loop. I'll think about what I want my counter to be, right? So if I wanna hit characters of the string in order, I should iterate through their indices, right? And I know that the first index of any string must be zero. And then from there, I have to think about how far I want to go. And so I could be given different strings, and in particular, strings of different length, like celery has six characters, hat has three characters. And so based on the length of the string, I need to change my number of iterations, right? And so I can say i depends on the length. I can say i is less than string.length. Again, important pattern here is, uh, recall the like off by one scenario here. I know that celery has six characters in it, but the last character has index five, right? Because remember, I start counting my indices at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this will let me hit uh, that final index properly. Then on every iteration, I just want to increment by one afterwards. And so to get going, why don't I just verify that my uh, variable i is flowing in the correct way? So I'm not going to print out the character yet. And I'll just run the first example. So this just says print out numbers from zero up to but not including the length of the string. So if I pass in celery, celery has a length of six. That means this for loop prints out numbers from zero through five. So I'll run this string iterate. There I see my zero through five. And then from there to really bring this to completion, instead of just printing out the literal number i, what I can do is say print out the character of the string at index i. All right, and that's the entire problem. And let's go ahead and run the second example as well. So celery, there I have celery followed by hat. And so let's finally work on this evens problem. This is going to be a little involved and there's some interesting logic within. So I'll create a file for this. Here I am in evens.js. And what I want to do is write a function that takes in a max number as an argument. And this function should print out all of the positive even numbers that are less than the max. So I definitely have a vibe that I'm going to use, you know, some for loop patterns here to get numbers uh, less than max. But then I need to make sure I only print out the even ones. Looking at the example, if someone calls evens and passes the number 11, I should print out all even numbers less than 11, right? It looks like I also print them out in increasing order, right? Two, four, six, eight, and so on. So let's lay the foundation. I will define our function. So it's going to be called evens, takes in some max. And I want to build this up in pieces, right? So what I always try to do when I solve like a new problem for me is to try to pick out language that I know I've solved previously or language that's familiar. So maybe I'm not sure how to like get even numbers, but something I can work on is getting numbers less than the max, right? And maybe even positive numbers less than the max at that, right? It's actually something we've done previously. If I want to get positive numbers less than max, I just want numbers from like one or so uh, up to max. And so I'll create a for loop for that. And I want to begin my counter i at the very first positive number. So I'll say let i equals one, right? Zero is not a positive number, so I won't go there. And I want to iterate while i is less than max. Literally just taking that language from the problem. And for now, why don't I just go by one? So I'll do i plus plus. So this, I think, establishes at least less than max logic in our code. So let's say I just console.log i, building my solution up in pieces so I don't get overwhelmed. And let's give it a go. And so when I run this code, I should see positive numbers that are less than 11. Right, and there I see it, my number's 1 through 10. So that's good to go. And so I feel like I'm pretty close now, uh, although I'm printing too many numbers, right? I'm also printing out the odd numbers. And so from here, let me just add some more logic into my code. I don't want to print out i always. I want to print out i only if i is even. And I have used that pattern before. Right? I know how to check for even numbers. And so what I'll do is I'll only print out i if i is an even number. So I can say i mod 2 using that classic modular pattern. If I divide i by 2 and it's a truly even number, then the remainder when I divide it should be exactly 0. And then if that is true, then I should print out i. So let me run this code. And there we have our solution for evens, right? Running just the first example 
uh, right now. And let's run the second example just to be sure. So this should print out two all the way through six. Cool. Notice in this like second column, it prints out two, four, six over here. Notice that it doesn't hit eight because you have to print out numbers that are less than the max, right? So eight is not less than eight, although it's even, so you won't print that out. All right, so that was the full walkthrough for this A exercise set for for loops. And what you wanna do is definitely, you know, spend some more time on these problems if you had any issues with them, right? So it's really important that you have this down pat and you're really self-sufficient with these for loops, but we'll have more exercises afterwards and we will turn up the difficulty, right? So hold yourself accountable and keep practicing these. And if you get stuck, you know, keep using the walkthrough, right? But the signal to move on to the next video would be, of course, being able to solve all of these problems on your own and feeling like confident doing that.